Hi, Jeanette. Welcome to Tech City. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Konko Jeanette Senami. I am a registered nurse and a registered pediatric nurse. I work with Lagos State Health Service Commission, but currently my unit is MCC Itosa. That's Maternal and Child Center Itosa. Mm -hmm. I am the first daughter of my parents. I'm a mother. I'm married. <laughs> and I have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about what the day in the life of a nurse is from when you resume work till when you close? Hmm. That's a very big question, but um, I'm going to um, break it down. So I'll just go to the point. Um, it is expected that we resume by 8 a.m. in the morning. That is for morning duty. Other states outside Lagos, most of them run three shifts, like morning, afternoon, and night. But in Lagos State, we run just two shifts. So it's either you are in the morning shift or the night shift and usually don't call it night shift because you are not resuming at night you are resuming in the evening so we call it by by duty so let me just put the morning duty as um, a case study here i won't use the by duty so you are expected to resume by 8 a.m in the morning when you resume you'd um, definitely pray with your patient then you take over from the night nurse. You take over from the, um, all the care they've rendered, where they stopped for you to continue with them. So after that, you ensure that all equipment on handing over is complete. The drug cupboard and everything about the patients are complete. Then you move to checking of their vitals. After checking the vitals, you move to medications. Um, after medication, if there is need to serve um, meals, then you serve meals while they use their medication. So you start to enter and document um, whatever you've done for your patient. While you're doing that, the doctors will definitely come in to come and review the patient. So while they are reviewing, you are going through the case notes to note if there is any change in um, the care you are rendering. And um, for patients, there are some patients that you are the one that would identify a problem. So you have to communicate with the doctor that, okay, doctor, this patient, I noticed this and this, why did you let us? So there is always a reward round that everybody has to communicate whatever they feel about the progress of the patient. So with that, that is when the change will come up in the case file. So you have to update your own case note as a nurse too to be able to continue the care with the other nurses that are coming on. So after that, we move to afternoon vitals, afternoon feeding, medication, just like that. But my own case is kind of a bit different. That scenario is for the adult patient. I work in a neonatal unit. That is a newly born baby to 28 days old baby. And these babies are not just babies because if they are, let me put healthy in quote, they would, they're supposed to be with their parent, the mom. So for the babies to come into the neonatal ICU, definitely there is something wrong with that baby. Mm -hmm. And we assume that the baby is very sick. So my word is very different. When we resume, we pray for them, we take over, we check their vitals. Those that are on monitor, you continue to monitor them. Those that are feeding, continue to feed. Those that are not feeding, you help to um, regulate their fluid. Some, and you continue to monitor their blood glucose level. So for those that are feeding, we feed them every three hourly. You know how babies are, you have to continue. So we feed them every three hourly. Then we continue the treatment that we are giving them. Some are deaf just for phototherapy. Some are there because they're having respiratory conditions, some for heart conditions, some congenital. So you treat according to whatever is bringing them into um, the ICU. So you do all that, you serve medication, you continue to monitor, unlike adults, that you just have times that you are, for those babies, you continue, they're always on monitor. So you continue to monitor and document whatever you're doing. Okay. So. so 
Do you use technology heavily in your daily process and operations at the hospital? Yes, we do. We do use technology in our daily activities in the hospital. Uh, for example, earlier I said we check their vitals, we monitor them. We, so all the equipment and everything we are using, definitely. So we use very well. Okay. Even with the input of um, documentation and input of anything you've done to the patient, everything is. Okay, can you share with us some specific technology that help you guys provide better care for your patients? Okay, um, like the digital thermometer is one. Instead of having to use that old in this thermometer that you have to continue doing like this, you put, you wait, you stand, even the patient will be tired. And so this one you just, so we use the digital thermometer. We use the um, monitor. The monitor, it monitors the SpO2. That is the level of oxygen in the blood. It monitors the blood pressure, monitors the pulse and um, we use suction machine for babies that, or even adults. I'm actually going to talk in respect to my own words now. So um, for babies, we have suction machine that we use for them in case they're having any more costs. Mm. And so we have suction uh, machine that we use. We have oxygen concentrators that we use also to administer oxygen to them. We have incubators for pretend babies. We have phototherapy light for babies that have jaundice. We have radiance meter for the phototherapy light to be able to measure the radiance so that you not give too much light or lesser light to the babies. We have a whole lot, if I continue to mention, I'll just, so yeah. we use a whole lot. Then we use the EMR. EMR is the electronic medical record. So, you know, back then we used folder. When you go to the hospital, you have to go and queue. Then they will be asking your name. They will be writing on the folder. You'll be carrying your card. Now it's not like that. So we have a card that is like ATM. They give to every patient. So just know your number and come straight. Tell us your number. Then we put it and all your information will be out. Mm -hmm. So any care that the doctors are writing out and that the nurses are giving out to you is definitely documented there. So anybody that goes through um, the patient's profile would see everything there. Mm. Okay, so what are some of the ways that technology is being used to improve patient education and engagement? Okay, to improve patient education and engagement. Engagement. Um, I would say telemedicine. Mm. There are most people that do not like um, coming to the hospital, having to kill, then you wait to see the doctor, then they ask you to go to the pharmacy, to the lab. So they prefer putting a call through, either the phone call or the video call, just to be able to assess the nurse or the doctor. Mm -hmm. That will tell them, okay, how are you feeling? Then they explain how they are feeling. Okay, I think you should come to the hospital. There's no point coming, just use this. If, for example, uh, I think my baby is running temperature. What have you used? I've not used anything. Okay, can you expose the baby? Can you give paracetamol? Can you do this? After 30 minutes, please call me back. Mm -hmm. So if you call back after 30 minutes and we are asking you that, how is the baby? I'm saying the temperature is fine now. Definitely there's no point coming to the hospital. So what we just need to do is to give a date for appointment that you have to bring the baby so that they'll be able to run any physical test if there is need for it. Mm. If there's no need, definitely we've solved that. And that person will not have to come to the hospital to come and queue and at the end of the day, just see the doctor for paracetamol. Yeah. So I think social media too helps. I think apart from the hospital itself, there are some professionals that use their social media platform to help mothers and community. So you just tell them, I think my baby is something is wrong with my baby and they'll talk to you. That there's no need to worry or, oh, I think you should take this baby. This thing you're saying is very serious. Please take to the hospital mm -hmm. and yeah, just. Okay, so what are some of the challenges you're facing using technology in healthcare? The challenges we're facing are much, but I'll just mention a few. One is, don't let me say finance, let me say light. Because without light, we can't use 
all these things we are talking about. Imagine we are sanctioning the patient and we are monitoring and there's no light. Everything will definitely go off. So um, light is one of the challenge. Then I think finance too. If the hospital is not ready to, you can't force them. Then I think another thing is maintenance. You have to um, involve those um, that uh, maintain those equipment so that it can last longer. Then another thing is, I think, um, trainings. It's a different thing when we have the resuscitate, we have the um, incubator, we have the monitor, and we don't have enough staff that can, or that knows they might know how to use it, but the proper way of handling and using it. Mm -hmm. So definitely that's a challenge. What are the barriers to widespread adoption of healthcare technologies? I would relate it to the patient side, because there are um, most of the patients that are not ready for change. Mm -hmm. They have this fixed mindset. Um, that feeling of this is how we've been doing it and that is how it has to be. What, which one is this that you people are giving us card like it's him. I don't like it. Just give me that small card. Let me go and get my folder and they like it like that. Then I think um, literacy, literacy. For someone that is um, learned, would definitely use the social media and would, would know how to assess with telemedicine and all of that. But someone that is an illiterate will find it difficult to um, do. Then the barriers, I still have to go back to infrastructures, electricity, finances, um, workload on the nurses and doctors, and that's okay. So poor maintenance culture is one of the reasons people give for the low adoption of technology in Nigeria and in the Nigerian healthcare system. From a worker's point of view, do health workers use equipment appropriately and properly care for them after use? I would say yes, health workers, we do use um, equipment appropriately. By the way, I would say that we have some instances that might not allow us to do them effectively. Like when you have um, more patients, the patient loss ratio, if it is too much, definitely you expect that the care that you are supposed to give, like for example, you are having one nurse to like 10 patients, the way you are supposed to face one patient and give your utmost care, if you are supposed to use any um, instrument or equipment on the patient, you would not used to the point of satisfaction before you want to, because you want to cover all the patients. Every patient wants you to be with them. For example, I'm using a suction machine and while at it, the light goes off. You know, we have to stop with that. So that is going to affect. Then another thing is the phototherapy light is on, the incubator is on and um, the light just goes off and immediately the light is back. Maybe the voltage or something is high or is low, it can cause. So then I think maintenance is another thing from the part of the management. You know, innovations come with a lot of scrutiny. Are there ethical considerations of using technology in healthcare? And what are perhaps your concerns? My concerns are people are not ready for change. And I think with the use of these technologies, they are supposed to. It's not really their fault though, because if we have uh, more of education on it and we are um, trying to go to meet each people, to explain to them maybe by television, radio, on how to make use of the social media in the right way, how to use telemedicine in the right way, I think people would be open mm -hmm. to using and those things. Then I think um, being biased is another thing and being considerate. How can we overcome the barriers surrounding using health and um, technology in the Nigerian okay. healthcare? There are several ways okay. that we can overcome the barriers that are surrounding um, the use of technology in healthcare. And 
I would say education and training is a very good part, is one of the crucial parts of it. If we can take our time to educate not only the healthcare staff, even the patients that are coming in. Like when you get to the hospital, there's a sitting or waiting area that they talk to everybody. Okay, this is the hospital. Welcome, thank you for coming. Um, they call your name after getting a card. They call your name. You go to this first person, they'll check your blood pressure, they'll check your weight, they'll check this, that. Then you move to this person, you know. They'll be able to um, know. And those are ways when you educate and you train staff on how to do things, how to use things, and so they will know, then they'll be prepared for it. Another thing is the um, privacy. One thing about patients is that once they know that they can tell you anything and there's confidentiality, they would say whatever they want to say. So with the use of the EMR, if you can tell them that, you know that when you carry that folder now, anybody can have access to flipping through and this one now anything that is wrong with you nobody would know unless they have so i think they should be able to know that their informations are safe then um, the emr itself needs to have um, this privacy um, kind of so um, that would ensure that the patient will be satisfied and i think there should be a feedback um, thing with it too. So the end users um, should be able to um, give you feedback on the services they are getting and then they should, the management themselves should work on it. Then um, the management should also provide ways that they can provide more of the equipment that we would need um, in the hospital setting. About the lights and other um, factors. They should know how they will go about it. Like most hospitals are using solar now because of the power outage and all of that. So they are using solar, they are using equipment that you can charge them. So even when the light goes off, they can still work for like one hour, two hours before. So I think those are the ways that we can um, overcome those barriers. All right. So what are your thoughts on the future of technology in healthcare? I have a positive um, mind towards that and I think we even have some that currently we are seeing the future already like the use of the digital um, smartphone I'm sorry the smartwatch most people have it that they use can measure your steps in a day it's going to calculate for you you had so so, so steps today, it's going to calculate and monitor your um, sleep and wake up time. It's going to calculate for you the calories you are. So we have the smartphones too, that helps with calculation of calorie intake. Um, most people that are um, quite obese, they are, most of them are getting the information about diet, exercise and all of that through their phones. Um, they will just have to connect to their dietitians and they will have to plan their diet. They plan it daily, the sleep pattern and everything. So I have a positive outlook to it that um, when we get there, although it depends on us, if we are open to um, accepting change, definitely we'll get there. And I can see that a whole lot of people are, um, they are, their mindset is good towards accepting those changes. So I'm very sure, I'm quite sure that we're going to get there. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome.